American allies around the world. His predecessor, John Kerry, with his granddaughter in tow, signed on to the agreement last year. I spoke with the secretary yesterday and asked him about his reaction to the president's announcement. Well, my immediate reaction is that it's an extraordinary abdication of American leadership. It is a shameful moment for the United States to have unilaterally walked away from an agreement which did not have one other country requiring us to do something. It was a voluntary program. We designed the program. The president was not truthful with the American people today, and the president who talked about putting America first has now put America last, together with Syria, which is in the midst of a civil war, and Nicaragua, which thought the agreement didn't go far enough. This is a, an extraordinary moment of fake news because the economy he described is not the economy of America. America has been gaining jobs in solar. Solar has gained 17 times the rate of our economy. There are 2.6 million jobs in our country in clean energy. Half of them are in states that Donald Trump won. So he is not helping the forgotten American. He is hurting them. Their kids will have worse asthma in the summer. They will have a harder time having economic growth. Uh, he's made us an environmental pariah in the world. And I think it is uh, one of the most self-destructive moves I've ever seen by any president in my lifetime. Mr. Secretary, how do you get the environmental movement to get the, the kind of slogans that he had in the Rose Garden. He well, said, let me, let me elected, tell you right now. He said he was yeah. elected to represent the people of Pittsburgh, not the people of Paris. That appeals to American voters. Sure, it, 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 but only in the most narrow way because most American voters understand that we need to deal with the problem of climate change. We spent you know, billions of dollars last year cleaning up after more intense storms in America. The average American citizen, the average worker, everybody in America who works was hurt by those storms. They're hurt by the impact of climate. They're hurt by the increased cost as a result of uh, disease that comes from bad air. I mean, you could run a long list of things that are impacting people, and we're going to do that. Well, he said he is willing to renegotiate. Is that practical? Is that even possible? Well, again, I come back to, to, to the... This is where the president misled the American people today in a grotesque way. Nothing is required of us. We signed up to the program we designed. The president could have just redesigned the program. He's only negotiating with himself here. He is allowed under this agreement to come up with what he's prepared to do for America, not just walk away from the entire agreement, but to go out there and pretend you are going to get China or India or a whole bunch of other people to pony up this money when there are only 20 countries, Andrea, that make up the major proportion, about 80-something, 80 85% of all the emissions on the planet come from 20 countries. They are the most developed nations. So, of course, some countries in the world that haven't contributed anything to climate change are, are going to hardly step up and say, oh, yeah, we'll pay for America's number two largest emissions in the world. That's not going to happen. What President Trump has done today is walk away from American leadership over decades that even President George H.W. Bush, Republican, signed up in Rio in 1992 to try to work on the issue of climate change and voluntarily come up with a program. The beauty of what happened in Paris is precisely that it allowed each country to design its program. And what was important was that President Obama and President Xi of China joined together to lead the world going into Paris by saying, this is what we're willing to do. Now, President Trump could have simply changed that. But he gave the America a huge fake news moment in which he pretended that certain things are happening that aren't. The fastest growing, one of the fastest growing jobs in America, wind turbine technicians. I mean, you, 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 America is doing incredibly well economically now, not badly the way he pretended. Some Americans are not doing well. That's true. And, and the president has appealed to them. But getting out of Paris is not going to help those Americans. It's going to hurt them. And the president 
uh, is is not in fact making America great again in this. He is weakening America. He's losing jobs. He's exposing Americans to worse climate change. He is not protecting America's interests in the long run for the next generations, for, for my children, other people's children and grandchildren. They are going to pay a higher price for the decision the president made today. Your successor, Rex Tillerson, uh, was opposed to this. He wanted to stay in the Paris Agreement. Uh, as best I could tell, he was not in the Rose Garden for that. What does this mean for the Secretary of State? I can't begin to guess at that. Uh, that's inside politics, and, and uh, you know that's not what's at stake today. What's at stake today is the leadership of the United States of America in an effort to try to make the world safer. And what the president has done is make a decision that is going to weaken America's leadership. It's going to lose us jobs. It's going to cost businesses the momentum that they had. Uh, but again, what people heard today from the president was a political speech, not a substantive one. What they heard today was an appeal to the lowest common denominator of American politics, not an appeal to a vision that, in fact, fits with where the world is going and needs to go with respect to climate change. I think Americans want to live by Paris. And I think the decision by Governor Cuomo and Governor, pa uh, Governor Jerry Brown, those are strong leadership decisions to keep us on track. America has 29 states that have passed laws for a renewable portfolio standard to strengthen our environmental ability. Those states, all 29 of them, have laws that will continue to move in the direction of Paris. The United States has been one of the world's leaders in trying to bring people to the table of common sense to deal with climate change. It is costing us billions of dollars already in the intensity of storms, the floods. I mean, the mayor of Miami Beach is raising roads in order to avoid flooding that takes place on a sunny day because of the high tide. In Boston, we have water that now comes over the seawall on a sunny day because of high tide. Sea level rise is happening. That's a scientific fact, not fake news. The studies that the president cited today are fake studies done by special interests that have always been opposed to dealing with climate change. The president walked away as president of the United States from science today, from facts, and he gave alternative facts which are not facts at all. ExxonMobil, Rex Tillerson's company, supported staying in Paris. Countless other major Fortune 500 companies have made critical investments based on Paris. And I believe we're going to see the vast majority of states and businesses continue to try to move to implement Paris, notwithstanding the bad judgment exercised today by the president and by the ideologues around him. Let me finally ask you about your trip to Antarctica last November. What did you see there that brought this home to you? Well, the scientists in Antarctica, Andrea, uh, from many different countries, without a political label, said to me, what is happening in Antarctica with the destabilization of the ice is a threat to the entire planet. You have ice in some places up to three miles thick. There's instability in the ice sheet. A huge section the size of the state of Rhode Island broke off a couple of years ago and floated out into the sea to melt. If that ice melts in Antarctica over the course of the next century to two centuries, you could have well over 100 feet of sea level rise. I mean, what is happening is horrific. We had a 36 degree Fahrenheit day at the North Pole in the course of, what, a few months ago. Every year is a hotter year than the year preceding it for the last 30 years. We have the hottest decade in human history. If you can't read something out of that, then you haven't learned anything in grade school or middle school or high school about fundamental science and facts. We cannot have ideology robbing our future on this planet. And I think people are going to uh, be deeply disturbed by the decision that was made on a political basis to appeal to a narrow political base. Secretary John Kerry, thank you so much. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.